the brook trout, or speckle trout. Algonquin Park in Ontario, Canada has a rare native population of them, an amazing, elusive natural resource, every bit worth the strict regulations protecting them. My friend Scott has had a little trouble catching this highly regarded angling prize. In the spring of 2012, we set out to try and reverse this string of bad luck. At least, that's what he calls it. I say, are we camping yet? We hit the road in good time, and soon we're inside the park boundary, looking for the turnoff to Rock Lake, our takeoff point. Suddenly, we spot a moose in the icy marsh beside the highway and pull over to take a few pictures. He's busy with breakfast and doesn't pay us much attention. He ambles back into the forest along a dirt road, and we hop back in the car and follow him for a bit. It's at that point we realized the dirt road is actually our turnoff to Rock Lake. We would have breezed right on past if he hadn't caught our attention. The moose, inadvertently or not, was showing us the way. That's a good omen to start this adventure. Any famous last words? You better look at the maps. <laughs> Boogie. Boogie. As we make our way through the narrows towards the lake, wind is singing through the treetops. And so begins our quest for the Algonquin Brookie. at our back. Fantastic. Pushing us in all the way down Rock Lake and uh, can't think of a better way to uh, start the trip. First it was the moose at the side of the road that made sure we didn't miss the turn off to Rock Lake and uh, and now we have the wind at our back if you can hear me through the check it out. It's cold but we're probably doing four knots without paddling. We make it to the first portage in no time. Okay, here we go. First portage into Penn Lake from Rock. <laughs> you with me, Scotty? Here we are, first day in Algonquin Park. And the first port to us from Rock to Penn, just about uh, four or five hundred meters. Nothing too crazy. Beautiful day. It's supposed to be cold, but this is, uh, man, if this is cold, we're good. You see a little bit of snow right there. Now, portaging, if you've never experienced it before, can be a fairly arduous activity. The more you do it, the easier it gets. It doesn't take long to figure out what works and what doesn't. 
and with all that weight on your shoulders, it's of the utmost importance to pay attention. Here's a shiny little example of me not paying attention. Save on batteries. Yeah, we're good. All right. First lesson in portaging, always pay attention. All right. I'm going to shut up now and pay attention to what I'm doing because it's slippery and muddy, as you can see. I come away lucky, just a scraped knee. Every portage brings you deeper into the park. And the deeper, the better. Well, here we are at the bottom of Penn Lake. We've had a wonderful ride with the wind at our backs, sun in the sky, a good friend and a good stout paddle. The wind is unbelievable. We are heading right down that little inlet for the falls from Clyde Gale Lake into here and hopefully the promise of some beautiful native Algonquin Park brook trout. So stay tuned and we'll see how this all pans out. Scott works the dark swirling pools below the falls, theoretically a great spot for brook trout. But that same wind that allowed us to get here in record time is now playing havoc with Scott's lightweight fly setup. To add to the misery, he loses a couple of nice flies. We decide to set off into Clydegale and search out a nice campsite. We find a secluded winter at the far end of the lake. All right, Scott, what do you make of the first day? I think you have to say we had quite a successful paddle in. We were uh, graced with the presence of the Karma Moose this morning on the road on the way in, and that started off the whole day for us on a good note, I think. And after a leisurely, almost dawdling stroll down uh, Rock and Penn Lake, we find ourselves here on Clive Gale with a nice little campsite and some time to relax and consider the day and make plans for how we're going to spend the next three days here in paradise. I decide to get right back in the boat and take advantage of this beautiful light. Take some photos capture some more video. Beautiful. Being out here this time of day puts me at ease. Feeds my soul. I noticed Scott didn't mention his fishing fiasco in his recap of the day. I can tell he's pretty miffed at his performance. He really wants to catch one of those fish. the sun settling into the horizon, Scott decides he's going to take one more shot at it, and he does a little trolling in the bay just opposite our site. He's not catching anything, but it sure is pleasant out there. I can think of worse places to not be catching fish. Dinner was still fantastic, fish or no fish. The two of us are bushed. We turn in. Tomorrow we've got a date with the Madawaska River. And hopefully, some native Algonquin brook trout. Second day, and I'm up early exploring the surroundings when I accidentally spook a duck off of her nest. She comes back after I leave, but I tell Scott maybe we should snatch a couple of those eggs, seeing as he's not bringing home the bacon. The early morning calm water is calling me. And while Scott preps his fishing gear, I take the opportunity for a little solo run around the bay. Now I'm not exactly a religious man, but I'm fairly sure that this is heaven. Beautiful morning. Got up a little later than I was hoping, but it was pretty chilly last night. I think we're going to try and uh, head up to Madawaska today, see if we can catch a little dinner. Or, more importantly, see if Scott can catch us a little bit of dinner. We heard a 
moose last night. I'm wondering if it's uh, the same uh, karma moose that uh, helped us find the turn off to Rock Lake. That guy's uh, got our back for this trip. We're in good shape. Ooh, I don't know if you can hear that, but the winds are coming. Goodbye, glassy lake. Having packed some gear for the day, and with renewed optimism, we strike out for the Madawaska. It's amazing what a bowl full of oatmeal and a stiff shot of fine Bruce County hooch will do for a man's outlook. Scott seems to be brimming with a new quiet confidence. Perfect for fishing, dude. Yeah. Troughs like this. He doesn't fail at many things, you see, and I can almost taste that trout. I mean, look at that guy. Look at that beard. As if that guy with that beard is not catching a fish today. As we make our way up the river, the passage begins to narrow. And narrow some more. Surely the fishing gods will reward my diligence. And narrower still, to the point that the water levels won't let us get any further in the boats. On the northern bank, we can hear a strong water source, outflow from a secluded lake at a higher elevation. Promising. I've got to go check that out, though. All right, we're going to uh, bushwhack it up into them there hills. Let's see if we can find the source of the running water where the brook trout may lay. About time you connected with a fish. Yeah. I'm really feeling our connection has been strained as of late. <laughs> not really been a lot of give and take, just a lot of me give, give, giving, and not taking any fish. So after a uh, successful investigation of said water noise and some nice picture taking, we decided to head back and uh, fish some of the little more open areas. We hadn't even seen a fish all day. Scott was nothing less than keenly perturbed. I, on the other hand, was catching everything I was after. The thrill of the hunt, trials, tribulations, the disappointment. He was getting his casting groove back now, deftly placing those flies. What sane trout could deny the skill? And then, he decides to try one more small pool before we head back. And somehow, I knew that tonight, dinner would not be freeze-dried noodles or backpacker's chili. Tonight, we would feast on nothing less than the finest and freshest Cashew curry nut chicken surprise. That will be about what we're doing for dinner tonight. It is delicious. Delicious, yes. But fresh fish, it was not. 